The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host. Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OA, the host of the Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminus and OA Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on OA Neighborhood Television. Of course, we got a great show this week. We're going to talk a lot of football, obviously. Um, we got a um, so we got our head coach here to talk to, um, who is a, who is a head coach at the Pontiac Phoenix, who was up to a 2-0 start the first time since 2010 has occurred. We got the coach of the Phoenix, Coach Wendell Jefferson. Coach, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Um, when you look at Pon- when you look at Pontiac, I mean, like what you've done, you know, the first time since 2010 that you guys have started two and zero. Um, how is the community like looking at the at you guys looking at the um looking at at the start? Well, I mean, it, it's been amazing. It's been amazing for these kids. It's one of the goals they set. Um, was to get the community more involved, and it uh, actually I was pleasantly surprised by the turnout that we had at our last game. And there's a buzz in the city of Pontiac regarding the work that these guys are doing. Uh, when you look at, of course, the game against Bishop Foley, of course, a lot of people were. Um, I mean, the fifty, the fifty-four points was the fifty-two points was the most points since the the the, 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 um, the most points Pontiac's put since um. 2010, of course, um, the second most, I mean, Royal Oak obviously was the first, I mean, I mean, actually my stats have been going like going out of my bread, but, but it's the second most in school history, you know, with, so how do you feel about, you know, with the way your offense has been performing, you got put 52 points two weeks ago, and then last week you put 44. So your offense has been like on fire lately. So explain your offense. Well, you know, first of all, I didn't know that was the second most points scored. So mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm happy for them about that. And the offense is just, you know, we got guys that are making plays. And the offensive coordinator, uh, Al Manfroni, uh, and actually his son is up in the box, Josh Manfroni. Um, they've been doing a great job of identifying uh, what we can, what we can uh, take advantage of uh, based on how the other teams lined up. But. It's basically, you know, we're just trying to take advantage of what's out there. Uh, we have some dynamic athletes that are making plays. You know, so I can't say that it's, it's one thing over the other. It's just everything came together, and these guys are working extremely hard. Um, when you look at a course, I want to know your initial feelings uh, after knocking off Madison Ice Bishop Foley, um, snapping the 42-game losing streak. What was your feeling? What was your initial feelings for well, my initial feeling is I'm happy, I was happy for the for the guys. Um, I ex- just the way that I, I operate, I expect to win. Um, I know how to handle it when we don't, but I expect to win every game that we go into. Uh, and just to see the look on those those kids' faces um, was gratifying. It's probably one of the best experiences that I've had. So I was just really, really, really happy for them. Because uh, you're in high school, and, and a lot of those guys are seen. Well, some of those guys are seniors, and they had never experienced winning. And, and so that's part of the high school experience. I was I was very happy for them for that. And then, of course, playing at, at home against Madison Heights Bishop, uh, against them, Detroit Lincoln King Academy, a really good team. Um, coming, They had their first win recently against Southfield, Southfield Bradford. Um, you guys went triple overtime in that game. Um you know, to win your first home game, you know, on the new field. How did that feeling feel, celebrating that win in front of your home fans? Yeah, that, that was great. Um, just just as happy as I was for the kids, I keep saying this, because it, it's like the city has deserved so much. Um, and so I was happy for the fans that stayed. Uh, quite a few left, uh, and, and but the ones that stayed, they were rewarded for staying, but I mean, all of it is, is I'm living through the, the, the eyes of the of the student athletes. And it's just, you know, it's great to see them, how excited they were. And, and just the fruits of working hard. I, and I, I just really like that for them. But uh, don't get me wrong. It was great. I love to win. And uh, the atmosphere was electric. And it was just, it was great. It was great. Um, of course, now when we look at, of course, looking forward, obviously, 
being in the gold division. Um, I'm looking at your schedule. You got a tough one coming up with Ferndale. Um, when you look at that matchup with Ferndale, I mean, like, you know, Ferndale's an 0-2 team coming off of two very tough losses. So what's your initial thoughts about getting this team prepared to take on a take on a Ferndale team you know is very good? So talk about, mm-hmm. obviously, playing, you know, of course, when you look at your team, you're in Division Three. Ferndale's a Division Two team, so... How do so? How do you prepare you guys for playing that type of level going up against a Ferndale team that you know is going to be hungry, looking for their first win of the season? Yeah, it, it, and one of the things that I that I constantly tell teams that I coach is that there's only one way to do this. Uh, it doesn't matter who you're playing against or what level you're playing. Uh, you just there's certain <laughs> principles that you have to keep. There's only one way to do it. And you prepare just like you prepare for any other team, uh, and you go all out. You, you work hard, and you stay assignment sound, and you live with the results. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Um, we do have some a few guys that's banged up, uh, primarily our quarterback, Kanye. Uh, so yeah, Kanye. So it's uh, a matter of getting him healthy, uh, making sure he can go. Uh, we're not going to, I'm not going to have him out there and he's not ready. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, so we're dealing with that. Uh, he toughed it out this last game. So I was uh, proud of, of, of him for that. Um, but we may not have him this week. And that we'll would be, be concerning. Yeah, we'll, we'll be prepared for it. You know, what, all we can do is, is keep moving forward and, and it gives another person an opportunity uh, uh, to be successful. Talk about, of course, Kanye. Obviously, you know he had he had an incredible game against them, Bishop Foley. Um, you told me he's a little banged up. So how is um how's Kanye Ben obviously been doing for you guys? Oh, he's been doing great. He's been doing great. You know, he's a, he's a junior, and there's a few <laughs> things that 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 he can do, um, you know, better. But it comes with time. It comes with time and experience. Um, but when when we've needed him to make a play, he's made a play whether it be with his arm or, or with his uh, legs. So I'm, I'm very happy with him. I'm happy with where he is. Uh, one of the things that I tell my team is we, we can never be satisfied with where we are. So uh, I want all of them to have the mindset of, you know, continuing to work and continuing to get better. Uh, but I look forward to what the future has for him as well as for his team. Um, when you look at other, other players that the league needs to know about, obviously, of course, media day, you did mention there were a lot of questions. Um, any other impactful pl- any other impactful players that the um, OA Nation needs to know about when it looks to Pontiac football? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, <laughs> the coach in me wants to say everyone because everyone plays a role and everyone has been doing great. Um, but the ones that statistically who stand out, one is Carter Leatherwood. Um, he's been the, even – he's on, on par with Kanye or even better when it comes to – impact on the game because he's making an impact on offense he's making an impact on defense uh and so he's he's one that everyone should know um also is two brothers Devin Johnson who's number number one he's been great as well uh, as a receiver and defensive back and then his brother who's a uh 10th grader uh he's number 21 which is Deshaun Johnson and he's been playing phenomenal. Uh, this, is this last game, we don't win it uh, without his um, defensive play. He got two interceptions. Um, I think he had like three pass breakups. And he's just solid and think that he's only a 10th grader. Um, he need, he definitely needs to be on the radar. He's about 6'1", uh, legitimate 6'1". And uh, he, just, he just has it. So I'm looking forward to... To him getting the attention that he deserves, and, and I, I think he's one of those D1 players. Um, obviously, how's the line situation, of course, that um, you did say during media day that you were looking for linemen. Um, how is the lineman situation looking over there at Pontiac? Well, you know, and, and not to take anything away from the linemen that we have, because they've been working extremely hard, and, and we just need more. Uh, we, we have... These two games, we've probably we were able to address and, and play. I think 17 players. So they've come both ways, and, and the teams that we're playing, they have at least 30 or 40. And so it's hard on these. It's hard on the uh, on the team. But 
it's picking up the buzz in the city, uh, the success that we've had. Um, we have more uh, kids coming out. They just started school today. So uh, we'll have some more kids are coming out there, but uh, they've been doing a good job. Uh, I, I love to see them uh, if they just go both, uh, one way and <laughs> to see how well they do. Um, but against Bishop Foley, um, Kanye had all day to throw. Uh, and so, but against Licky King, they, they put more pressure on the box. Uh, so we had a few leaks. Uh, but a lot of that is just fatigue because you're going both ways. We don't have any linemen that don't play the other side of the ball. And when you look at the schedule coming up, you're going against teams that, you know, have linemen on both sides of the ball. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I mean, but I'm looking at, I'm looking at that schedule and I'm saying to myself, I could see maybe, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm, and I'm going to be honest with you. I think I could see maybe four, four, four more wins ahead of you guys. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, Ferndale's a tough game. Avenel's going to be a tough game. I think Berkeley looks winnable for you guys. I think Royal Oak looks winnable for you guys. And I think Garden City mm -hmm. looks winnable for you guys. So when you look at going into a situation that you're going to be playing against um, teams that go one way in particularly bigger schools that are on your schedule, um, it, but also these kids, you know, they got to rise up the challenge. Yeah, yeah and they do. Yeah, so, so that's the biggest thing about them is, is they've risen to the challenge. And, and I have uh, I have no doubt that we'll be competitive in every game. Um, like I said, I expect to win every game. Uh, I'm okay with <laughs> losing. I understand that part of it, but just the, the inner drive that these these kids have it, it's amazing. Um, I don't think that um, most teams can have the success that we've had these first two games dealing with the numbers that we have. So I'm. I'm I'm very proud of them, and I believe that they've shown everyone that they're ready for whatever whatever uh, anyone brings. They're going to be ready for it, and they're going to go all out. And when you look at, of course, with the um, with the schedule, obviously, um, mm -hmm. people people look at here. If I mean, if you guys can keep winning games, you know, what I mean, then I know a lot of people in Pontiac. I know that P word comes out postseason. You know what I mean? <laughs> Could be a possibility here. I mean, like, right. but um, but when you look at the success, you know, obviously taking it one step at a time, taking it baby steps. I mean, like, mm -hmm. you knew it was going to be a challenge turning this program around. And, you know, the, with the numbers, it still is. But right. I think when you look at what Pontiac, what you guys have done, you know, is you have brought belief and hope in that, in the, in, in, in the, in the community. So mm -hmm. when you look at, when you look at, Bring in, I mean, when you look at, of course, the future of the program, what are you viewing the future of the program in your own eyes? Well, you know, it starts with the, um, everything started with my, my talks with the, the um, principal and then the athletic director, so uh, Principal Montgomery and with the athletic director, Craig uh, Covington, um, we were all on the same page, and, and that's to, to establish the culture, Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 just solidify the program for the future, and, and give people a reason um, to celebrate these these uh, student athletes. Give them a reason to, you know, we the, the truth is is uh, the kids leave. You know, they go to other other schools, and and you see a lot of successful programs around here, and, and the kids actually live in Pontiac, and so it's our goal to to stop that pipeline coming from Pontiac. Um, but, you know, parents are going to make the decisions that they make. Um, but we want to be, we want to make it a little bit tougher for them to, to leave, um, both, you know, both academically and athletically. So there's a big emphasis on making sure that all our student athletes um, will be eligible to receive a Division I uh, scholarship. Uh, and then just to provide everything, all the resources uh, that they need to be able to, to be successful. Uh, on the field as well as off of it. So I am, um, I love the future. Uh, I love the future of our team. We have quite a few. Uh, we have 10th graders that are playing significant roles for us. Uh, and and I'm just looking forward to, to what's, what's to come because they're only going to get better. And, and so if we just get our numbers up, then I'm, I'm really looking to, to do some things. And you look at the middle school program here, obviously with Pontiac. Um, how is how is the middle school program going for you guys? 
So one of the things that we also did, and that was part of the conversations, is, is we aligned the middle school uh, with the, the high school program. Uh, so uh, there's a reason why I have 11-man uh, staff because uh, I have the entire uh, middle school staff working with us, uh, learning what we do. And so the middle school is going to mimic that, and we're going to prepare uh, the middle school for Phoenix football. So by the time they get to us, uh, they know the basics, and, and then we can just let them, you know, we can we can just, you know, clean up the details a little bit and, and let their athletic ability uh, take over because they, they will know what they're supposed to do, and that'll free their mind up to just play. So it was a purposely we've aligned those. Um, the goal is to also align the the little league organizations uh, with us. Uh, so that we have a true program from uh, Pee Wee all the way up to varsity. And that is a very, very important um, element when you look at, of course, building the younger levels into the varsity program. The sub-varsity program is also very important as well. Um, when you look at when you look at um, Pontiac, of course, um, when you look at, obviously, you know, I mean, like, and I know we talked about this earlier, is the initial thoughts of the division in your eyes. I mean, obviously, you know the gold. Um, you know, you've seen – I know you've seen um, seen some of these teams, how they played. Um, when you look at – when you look at you guys preparing, you know, I mean, obviously, Ferndale this week, you still got to play Avondale in a couple of weeks. You got to play um, Berkeley. You got Royal Oak. You got both Berkeley and Royal Oak at Pontiac. Um, mm-hmm. So – what is your initial thoughts to the guy saying, you know, we're, I mean, I mean, like obviously saying like, you know, we can compete with these guys and, mm-hmm. you know, not only just as a team, but also as a program. Um, mm-hmm. So what is your initial thoughts to, um, to, to having that mindset to say, you know what, you know, we're not the same old Pontiac from years past. We're a different Pontiac football. We're a different breed. I mean, like, what is your thoughts on that? And uh, also when it comes to the division. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's very important. Uh, self-confidence is very important uh, when it comes to sports. And so it's just a matter of getting our kids to understand how good they can be, how good they are, and how good they can be. Um, I don't really, you know, the divisions and all of that, that that's, that's great for, for rankings and stuff like that, but I don't believe that there's any opponent that if we, you know, that we don't have an opportunity to win. I mean, that's just my mindset, and that's the mindset that I want them to have. It doesn't matter who you face. Uh, there's an opportunity for, for us to win. Um, I know I use the word compete, but, you know, really, there's, it's an opportunity for us to win. You know, and so we have to have the confidence. I mean, we don't want to – we don't want to um, – lose the game before we play it because we're more concerned about, oh, well, we might be able to compete with them. No, we can win the game. And so uh, that's that's just the mindset that I wanted them to have. Uh, if that's a winning mindset. And, um, you know, I just look forward to, to I'll, let, I'll let the outside forces that be determined um, where we're supposed to fit in. Uh, we'll just play whoever's in front of us, and, and we'll – do what we're supposed to do and, and live with whatever the outcome is. So um, I, I like the different division. I'm, I'm, I'm actually happy that we are playing teams that are um, above us as far as divisions go, um, because I believe you have to challenge yourself. You have to challenge these kids uh, because no one really knows how good they can really be. Uh, it's an opportunity for, for us to show and for them to la- learn and find out about themselves. So, I never talk about another opponent, opponent as far as our odds of winning and losing, other than to say that hey, it's an opportunity for us to win. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to change some minds about the Pontiac program. And when you look at, of course, the um, the the um, the start. I mean, like you know, I mean, like people look at it and say, you know, Pontiac's had their struggles. We've talked about that on the um during media day, um, mm-hmm. and. You talked to me about, um, you know, expectations and excitement, and, you know, and I know, and I noticed they, um, and when I did the preview show, um, I, I said that you would snap the streak and you yep, did, you did instantly. I mean, like, mm-hmm. 
what you guys did against Bishop Foley. But there's one thing I'm very concerned about with you guys and sure. during this stretch, and that's your defense. Um, you gave up mm-hmm. 22 against um, against Bishop Foley and then 42 in triple overtime against Detroit Lincoln King. So what is the, you know, I know the balance is there, but um, the balance has to be there. But, you know, when you look at defensively, you know, you got that high octane offense, but defensively, you know, giving up a little too many points there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you always would like to do better, uh, um, but I, I would think it's the the main thing, and we don't really know um, what we have in a defense uh, because uh, everyone's going both ways. So w- when we started out, um, excuse me, one second. When we started out uh, against Royal Oak, um, I believe we were we were on defense first, and, and that's what. You know, we, we needed to do that because we needed to see um, what the defense would do when they're when they're not gassed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's – I don't know where we are yet with that because of just the circumstances. Do we need more bodies? Yes. Uh, I'm not concerned about the defense. Um, not from a schematic standpoint as I am. Uh, I'm more concerned about just the body aspect of it, having the uh, amount of players that you need to where everyone is getting a good break when they need it. You know, you're not going both ways. Um, would I would I like some six foot two, two forty pound linebackers? Absolutely. I mean, um, but that's not what we have right now. So uh, we'll just keep working with, with what we got. And, and these guys are, um, you know, I'm just proud of them because they, they work so hard and they believe in themselves and they believe in each other. That's always a good thing, you know. When you when you have a team that believes in each other, believes in believes in a coach, you know what I mean? Believes that, you know what I mean? All, I mean, great things are going to happen. And I think that explains the two and oh start for you guys is, you know, they believe in each other, the confidence that they're getting. Um, bottom line is, you know, I think people, you know, people look at Pontiac and say, that might not be an easy win anymore. So, you know, with the way that way you guys played those two games against Bishop Foley and, and Bishop Foley, let's not forget won the Catholic League twice last I mean like last year and also two years ago. So you beat a heck of a team there. And then Lincoln King Academy, same same boat that you guys were in. Um obviously last year they were 0 and nine and they picked up their first win against Bradford Academy and then you guys had that triple overtime game. Um in that game against Lincoln King, when you guys went to overtime, um what was your initial thought process going into overtime with virtually with virtually a new team. What was your thought process going into overtime in that game? Well, you know, first of all, I was just happy that we, we made it to overtime. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to admit that I've been coaching under um, pro rules for so long that I uh, um, there's a, a mistake that I made mm-hmm. that we didn't have a two-minute warning. So, um, I was just happy that we got there, that the guys uh, uh, did what we needed them to do. Of course, we needed to, you know, by design, we had to let Lincoln King score. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'd have the opportunity to come back and tie it, score, and then stop them from getting a two-pointer, which we did. Uh, and then so we came down with, what, 50 seconds to go, and we scored to take it overtime. So I was happy with that. And, you know, it, it just when it got to the uh, – Second or third, the second overtime, I was just, you know, we got we got to stop them here because as much as you, uh, much as your heart uh, will tell you that you can continue, um, sooner or later these guys' body was just they weren't going to be able to keep going, mm-hmm. and, and so um, I was just happy that we, you know, that we stopped them when we did because I was really concerned about going to a fourth overtime. Uh, but when we went to the initially to go back, I'm sorry to your original question, is that when we we're going to overtime, I just was like, okay, let's go, let's get it, you know, let's get it. We're gonna win this game. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that, that's what my thought was. I just, I just have the most confidence in my guys because of how hard they work. And and right now, you know what I mean, two and zero. Oh, when you look at Pontiac football, the um one of the best start since 2010. Um, mm-hmm. And that says a lot um, when you look at the Phoenix, especially where you guys have been. But before I let you go, Coach, um, any final thoughts? Um, 
Any anything you want to say to OA Nation about Pontiac football and everything? Uh, no, we, we just uh, only thing I guess I'll say is that um, Pontiac football. You know, we're here. We're gonna be competitive, and we're gonna do things the right way. And uh, you know, we, we we're gonna try to win. We want to win, and, and so um, the OAA is a a great league. It's historic, and there's a lot of talent in it. And we we just want to live up to uh, be one of the best teams in OAA. And, and so I think if we do that. Uh, then, then you know, we'll be we'll be happy, <laughs> but you're really not that happy until you win, you know, until you win it all. So I know the playoffs is a word, but you know, let's be honest, we all want to get there. I always, I want to play the last game of the year. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be really interesting. Obviously, um, I mean, I know that if you guys keep winning, that might that conversation might come up. I mean that might come might come up deeper, so that will be really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, um, so obviously, I wish you the best of luck this this week this week against Ferndale and also the rest of the season. Um, thank you for joining us this week, Coach Wendell Jefferson, Coach Pony, Coach mm -hmm. of the Pony Phoenix. Thank you really much for joining us this week. Hey, thank you, and I want to thank you for your your belief and support. Uh, um, you are one of the few who said it that we would uh, we have a chance to win a couple games this year. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Thank, thank, you. thank you really much. God bless. Yeah. Uh, of course, when you look at Pontiac, that was Coach Wendell Jefferson. Um, obviously, you know, and I did say that Pontiac would win multiple games, and, I, and I'm looking at their schedule the rest of the way, and I think they're going to win some games. I mean, they're going to win at least – I think they could win at least three games, three more games on that schedule, or maybe four. I mean, I think that Troy Athens game – you know, could be a little iffy, especially the way Troy Athens has been playing. Um, but Pontiac, their start at 2-0, and um, it's created a lot of headwaves around the league, obviously. And when you look at the Phoenix's start, when you look at Pontiac, the way that their team's been, you know, it's been, it's been a challenge for them. But they have really managed to find a – they managed to win games. Um, they found a way to win some games. And, you know, and, and have that belief in each other. So I'd like to thank Coach Wendell Jefferson for um, calling in this week here on the podcast to talk Pontiac football. Um, obviously, we got some other teams to talk about as well. Um, staying with the Gold Division, um, Avondale is another team that I've been really surprised with. 2-0 um, and start. Um you know, obviously knocking off Wartonville Brandon, that is a big deal. But the changeover from offense is going from a air raid attack to more of a ground attack. Obviously, under Coach Bob Meyer, running that offense has been really instrumental for um, Avondale, of course, turning that um, turning it around. Um, so Avondale now two and zero for the first time since 2018. That's a big deal. Because now you look at Avondale and say, okay, are they the favorite in the blue and the gold? Are they favorite in the gold? I mean, that is a possibility. So when you look at Avondale, I mean, that is a team to really keep an eye on. I mean, them and Pontiac, both 2-0, and oh, you know, obviously Pontiac, you know, has been, you know, they, they've, been, they've been down for so long, but now they're on the way up. Um, Avondale, you know, they've been consistent. I mean... You know, it doesn't matter who the coach is. You know, if it's Ekaterier, Corey Bell, and now you have Bob Meyer coaching. Um, you know, when you look at Avondale, I mean, they're going to be a scary team come postseason time. I think they will be. I mean, so that's something to really watch for with Avondale is that 2-0 start, really incredible what they've been doing. Um, a lot of confidence in Avondale right now, the way that that team's been. You can see it in the top in the top ten rankings um this week on the poll at, at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um where I have Avondale ranked. I have them fit this week in the poll. Um when you look at disappointing teams in this division, um, you know, Royal Oak um is one and one after knocking off Taylor. Um Taylor this year, though, I'm gonna be honest with you, they're not very good. I mean, they are not very good. I mean, I'm just gonna lay it all out. But Royal Oak, their defense has got something there. They, there's a blueprint to success when you look at Royal Oak. And the blueprint to success 
for them has been their defense. Despite the second half disaster against Holly, I mean, Royal Oak has really played some good football defensively. And I think clearly that's going to be what's going to get them going forward is their defense, you know, their defense is going to have to carry them in games. If they want to win games this year, defensively is going to be the one that wins them those games. And I think, honestly, that's where I think for Royal Oak, that's where they got to go is, honestly, their defense. Um, when you look at them, um, and I think that they can get that turned around quick. Ferndale off to an 0-2 start defensively. I'm really concerned about that team. Um, 68 points allowed in two weeks. It's not going to get the job done. Um, 30, 31 against... Um, McComb, Lance, Cruz, and then Holly, 37. Um, so 68 points allowed. That's not good. Um, they've got to get something figured out on that side of the ball. I mean, like, if you're Coach Eric Royal in the um, defensive, defensive staff there, you got to get something figured out there. I mean, offensively, you know, 20 points isn't bad. I mean, like, but you got to get a little bit more better production from your team. Um, on both sides of the ball, especially defensively, when I look at what Ferndale's concerns. Um, and then, of course, there's Berkeley. When you get outscored 77 nothing, you know, there's no words. Really isn't. You got shut out 35 nothing by Troy Athens. You got, and then you lose 42 nothing to Wild Lake Central. There's just no words to explain what's going on there. And this week, they got Avondale. Brutal matchup for you. Just brutal. I mean, it's going to be a tall task. It really much will be. So, that's my take on the gold right now. Of course, obviously, you look at Avondale, Pontiac right now are the two, um, are the two top teams right now in the division. Um, Ferndale right now would say three. Roy Oak, I can't trust that team offensively. And then there is um, Berkeley right now. Um, so a lot to fix if you're Coach Sean Shields and the Bears up there. Um, just a lot to fix with them. Um, let's go now from the gold to the blue. Um, the blue this year has been topsy-turvy. And I think it's a good word to describe it. Troy sits at 2-0. They're, they've shut their last two opponents out. But here's my thoughts on Troy. Until you play somebody legit, you know, I can't trust Troy one bit. There's a couple reasons why I can't trust him. You look at your first two opponents, Macomb, Lance Cruz North, and Detroit Mumford. Both teams, not very good. Then you got Royal Oak this week. Until I figure out something with Troy... It's hard for me to trust this team considering that that team, considering, you know, you haven't been tested defensively. You haven't, you've had good offensive numbers, but wait until you see a legit defense. Um, you look at, of course, North Farmington. They played a tough schedule. I mean, they played Groves. They played Caledonia. They haven't fared well both games. Seaholm lost a tough one to UAD Jesuit. Oak Park lost to UAD Jesuit in Oxford. So, I can't judge Troy and say, well, okay, here's a team that, you know, and I know, and I know, I know Jake who's on um, Twitter, um, he, he ranked Oak Park, no, he ranked, actually ranked Troy, um, I think in his top 10. I'm not buying that one bit, and there's a couple reasons why. The schedule that they play until that team Gets tested by, I think, North Farmington and Seaholm, I think, are going to be your two biggest tests for Troy going forward. Those are, the, those are my eyeball tests, is North Farmington and Seaholm. Those are the two teams I am looking at with them. Maybe Oak Park. Now, Oak Park, they've got their fair share of trouble. They got their issues. That could be a team that's in some trouble. Um, Troy Athens. The loss to Frazier still bothers me. Yes, they had six guys hurt. I get it. But still, that's an inexcusable game for you to lose, especially with a team that is not as good as you are. 
You are better than the six points you showed in that game against Frazier. And that was on your home field. So, if you're Troy Athens, you are really behind the eight ball right now when it comes to the schedule. Because I think the schedule's against you right now. And then, of course, you have, you got to win some games. You have got to win some games. 35 nothing was a start against Berkeley. But, you have got to beat some people. You got to beat a North Farmington. You got to be a Seaholme. Um, and when you look at it, of course, you got to win that game against Troy. You got to win it. I mean, that's probably the only avenue I see maybe for you getting in the postseason. And that's not even a lock. Because that loss to Frazier really hurts you. So, that's something I'm looking at with Troy Athens. Is, can this team figure out against a good team? You know, they've got to beat somebody legit. They've got to beat somebody legit. If they can't, this team's in trouble. Really is. North Farmington, I'm not pressing the panic button on them yet. Um, yeah, they got blown up by Caledonia, um, 42-7. I mean, and they got blown up by Grove, 36-3. The defense has been a concern. Offensively, only 10 points in two weeks. It's not good. Um, 60, I mean, 78 points allowed. That's not good. Um, they've got to get that addressed quick. Um, and that's game, and that schedule won't get any better. I mean, they got Seahome coming up. Seahome, I give them a pass because of the game against UD Jesuit. Um, I was just shocked how they were just shredded on the ground. Just really shocked how they were just shredding that game against UD Jesuit. I mean, that can't happen. And I know Coach Jim DeWall's defense is that can't happen. Um, Oak Park, really, there's no words to describe what happened that game against Oxford. Really no words. Um, Oak Park just didn't look very good against them. Um, I mean, like, and then they didn't look good against UD Jesuits. So that's a team. I know Tyler Kapp and I'm Scott Bernstein. We talked about this before the season started. Oak Park was a great unknown. And now they're sitting 0 2. That could be bad news for the Blue. That could be really bad news for the division. You know, with Oak Park struggling right now, that is just really bad news right now. So when you look at the teams in that division, I still think Seahome's the best team in that division. I would put North Farmington ahead of Troy. Um, then it's Troy. Then it's Oak Park. Then Troy Athens. Now, Athens. Could make a could make a statement if they cannot if they can go on a run here. But like I said with them, that loss to Frazier is absolutely killing them. I mean, that is what I'm looking at with Troy Athens. Is they have to they have to win games. They have to win games they're not supposed to. When you look at the rest of their schedule, Pontiac's not a, not a win. Pontiac's not a given game for them. I mean, I think Pontiac's going to give them problems. I really do. I mean, that rest of that schedule it's brutal. It's tough for them. But when you look at a team like Troy, who's getting a lot of positive, positive, you know, obviously the 2-0 and start, you know, defense not allowing a point, you got to look at the competition they play. You got to. I mean, yes, your two wins are against Division One teams, but is it really getting you better? That's the question I have with Troy. And that's the question I'm always going to have with Troy is – that schedule is not going to prepare you. It's not going to. When you're going against a team like Southfield, you could look at possibly playing a Clarkston, a Lake Orion in the playoffs, or a, or a, um or even an Adams, or a, or I mean like that's going to that doesn't look good. That's not going to be good. You know, until you until they start playing tough competition, I can't trust Troy one bit. I really can't. You know, that's why when you look at the top 10 on the rankings, I don't have Troy ranked because of the schedule. It's not the talent pool. It's your schedule. You know, are you getting better? That is the big question I have with Troy. Are you getting better? Now, Noah Urry's been playing pretty well for them. But, you know, but are you getting better? That is the big question. I'll know a lot about North, about Troy when they play North Farmington, when they know when they play Seahome, and when they play Oak Park. 
They got that Troy Athens game, which will be really interesting coming up as well. So we'll see what happens there. Um, let's go to the white. Ant had a had a heart had two two tough games against two quality teams and Detroit Cast Tech and Clarkston. Their defense showed up in both games. Played really well. Even when their I Octane offense struggled against Clarkston. Now, albeit credit goes to the Wolves defense in that game. Um obviously with Devin Stevens playing really well in that one. Um but A T, they looked the part. They looked the part. I mean, they're playing good football right now. They're finding a way to win win games ugly, and that's gonna help you if you want to make a deep postseason run. So with A T, they're doing things right right now. They're playing they're playing well right now. Groves ran into West Bloopia last week. Their pass defense just got exposed in the first half. I mean, I don't trust their pass defense one bit. Um But they had they had some issues against um they had their first share of issues against um you know against West Bloopia. Now West Bloom is very good. No don't get me wrong. They're a very good team. But I was just shocked how Raekwon Nance has shattered their um, pass defense. And then Cameron Flowers had a quiet 118 on the ground in that game. Just shocked. How um, Now, yeah, Groves looked good against North Farmington, but I think all that was North Farmington's mistakes. Plus, Groves did, um, they stepped up their game in the second half. So, I'm not pressing the panic button on the Falcons yet. Really not. Um, Harper Woods. Um, when you look at the Pioneers, their two games, Stony Creek, there was a very there was a controversial call in that one that decided that one. And then when they played Lake Orion, Lake Orion just out topped them. That's really what the bottom line was. Was the Dragons just out topped them. And I didn't think they were prepared for Lake Orion speed. I really didn't. Um But, you know, Harper Woods, they've got some things to fix. I think their quarterback situation has to be settled now. Um I like their quarterback a lot. I think he's going to be a good kid, good player. Um, Stephon Buford, he's going to have to play wide receiver for them to have a chance. He's going to have to play wide receiver. If Buford plays wide receiver, you know, you can use him at quarterback at times. You can use him for wildcat situations. But for Coach Rod Olden, obviously one thing you got to do is get Jacob Owen involved. And I think this team really misses Dakota Garriott. Because Gary can spread the can spread the field out. Yes, he's a freshman, but you know the capability this this young man has. So I think they really miss Gary. And if if he comes back, Harper Woods would be a much different team. But defensively, this team they've got some issues. They've got to f- address those issues defensively. I mean, twenty one points against Stony Creek, twenty eight against Lake Orion. I mean, allowing 24 a game, that's not good. That's not good, especially for a proud defense like Harper Woods is. I mean, they got to get that thing fixed real quick. And it's a tough matchup coming up with them this week with Southfield. So, we'll see how that one goes. Farmington, you know, they hung tough with Muskegon Reese Puffer. I mean, I was really pleased with how they hung tough with them. Um, They played... um, I think they've been playing good football. I mean, Detroit hunted for it. They blew them out 52-6. Um, Reese Puffer, you know, is a good team. Um, I think this is the big one for Gro- for Farmington is taking on Groves in Beverly Hills. So we'll see how that one goes. I mean, that could be a good test um, when those two teams play. And I think that could be a really interesting game when those two go at it with one another um, this week. Um, Bloomfield Hills. This team gets up a ton of points. Jace Reed's been a good player for them. But I'm wondering where, where the heck Kieran Crosley's at. I mean, I mean, Kieran Crosley, I'm high on this young man. I mean, like, but I'm wondering where he's at. Is he playing quarterback? Or is he up playing on the defensive line? I mean, Jace Reed's been your best athlete so far for Coach Jan Laurie. But you got to get more playmakers. You got to get more... You know, and I think Bloopy Hills, this team's in some trouble. 57 against Stony Creek, that's not a good, that's not good. That is not good. 
And then you add, you gave up almost, I think you gave up almost 30 against Seal. That's not good. Um, Blueby Hills could be in some trouble. Rochester, I think, is a team that's in some trouble. And the reason why I say this, the game against Utica where they blew a 15-6 lead, that can't happen. That really can't happen. And you, lo and you lose that game by one point. And then last week you took on Adams. He just got shellacked 35 nothing. Adams offensively, yes, Ryan Waters is very good. I mean, he's a good quarterback. I've seen him play freshman football. He's a good player. Really good player. Um, but Rochester's got some issues they got to fix. They could be in some trouble. They could seriously be in some trouble. So, we'll see what happens. But overall in the white, my best team right now in the division, Southfield. Then it's Harper Woods, then Groves. I mean, I can't trust Groves. Um, I just can't trust Groves, especially how they played against West Bloomfield. Um, I, I need to see more from them defensively. Um, Farmington, I have them fourth. Um, Rochester fifth, Bloopy Hill sixth when I look at it right now. Um, and then the red. Um, West Bloomfield's playing the part, had to survive Chippewa Valley. Um, and then they were very impressive against Groves. Um, when you look at West Bloomfield, obviously, Raekwon Nant, you look at, of course, you know, everybody on that team, they've been playing really good football lately. Um, a lot to like with the Lakers. Um, defensively, they've done more than just enough. Um, but honestly, when you look at the Lakers, here's a team that, you know, they look, they look good. And they played, and they played both games on the road, and that says something about that team. It says a lot about them. So, credit where credit's due with the Lakers. They are rolling right now. They are playing good football right now. And I really like where West Bloop is at right now. Lake Orion. The Dragons offensively look really good. They look really good. Well balanced. I mean, T.R. Hill looks the part. Billy Roberson's been playing good. Jackie Vasquez has played well. Raymond Payne's been playing good. Offensive line's been good. But what I was really impressed in that Harper Woods game was the defense. I mean, against Livonia Stevenson, this, this defense gave up 30 points. They gave up 33 points. That's not a typical Lake Orion defense. Now, against Harper Woods, albeit the kickoff return, the uh, punt return for a touchdown, which was very questionable in my opinion, but, but technically the defense allowed zero points. Even though the stat line is going to say six, but defensively, I thought the defense played really well, especially Kane DeGraffenry. If he's involved, this defense is much better than people think. That's the key. He's got to get involved. And when you look at the game against um, Livonia Stevenson, I guess the Spartans' game plan was run the ball away from Dick Refinery. Run the ball away from him. I mean, but you look at the defense, Trey Pacmara had a nice game. Austin Kahn had a nice game. Andrew Parker had a nice game. Linebackers had a nice game. Um, I'm telling you, Lake Orion, they looked apart. The they really do. Adams, obviously their defense has been playing well. Um, St. Mary's game said a lot, especially their defense with Mateo Humbert. Um, Ryan O'Water starting to fit in company at quarterback. Jury's still on Adams. They got Clarkson this week. So, you know, Brady Priest scoring has been playing good. But like I said, that Clarkson game is going to say a lot. Um, speaking of Clarkson, the game against Nordville, they, they just did not look good at all. I mean, Honestly, offensively, they just did not look good at all. Um, albeit credit goes to Nordville. They're a good team. But Clarkson's defense got shredded in that game um, by the Mustangs. But I got to give credit where credit's due. Um, I think that um, in the game against Southfield for Clarkson, played much better. Much better. Yes, they have some turnover issues. They're still a young team. Um, on, the, on the offensive side of the ball. But defensively, they played really well, especially Desmond Stevens. Caught a touchdown and then um, picked off a pass 
picked up an Isaiah Marshall pass, um, preventing a touchdown. But when you look at Clarkston, it'll be interesting to see. But I think Clarkston's heading in the right direction a little bit. I, I just think that they're heading in the right direction with the way that they the way they played, um, and that explains the number ten ranking this week. So that's something to really watch for. Oxford. Look good against Oak Park. I thought they were the better team against Eisenhower despite the loss. Um, Luke Johnson's the real deal. Um, Jack Hendricks, he's got some growing to do a little bit. Um, didn't look good against Eisenhower. Looked better against Oak Park. Um, but we'll see what happens. I mean, big test awaits them when they play Lake Orion. So that'll be really interesting there in that game. Um, and then you look at... Um, and then there's Stony Creek. Um, Stony Creek, when you look at them, I mean, I mean, they were, I felt like against Harper Woods, they um, had a questionable call against them, um, which turned the game around, gave the Pioneers a um, win, um, had a slow start in that game, but then they went and exploded for 57 against Blue Bay Hills. That kind of says a lot right there. Um, Coach Nick Merlo's team, I mean, like, they've found ways. They know how to win games, especially defensively. Um, but we'll see. I mean, tough test ways for them this week. So we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. Okay, now, picks for the week, obviously, for week three. Um, we're going to go from the gold first to the, um, to the um, red here. Of course, our first game we're going to talk about here is, um, is Abaddon and Berkeley. Um... This is going to be a tough matchup on paper for Berkeley. Um, Berkeley have, hasn't scored a point this year. Avondale has been playing. They can play different styles of football to beat you. Um, I would take Avondale in this game. I mean, that's what I'm going with at Hurley. Um, I think Avondale wins this one pretty pretty convincingly um, in that game. Um, Pontiac taking on... Um, Pontiac takes on Ferndale. This is a this is going to be an interesting game because Ferndale comes in 0-2. Um, defense, I mean, both teams defensively have not been very good. Now, here in the course of news county, Donaldson might not play is a little bit concerning for me when you look at Pontiac. Um, when I had my interview with them, Coach Jefferson. Um, I'm gonna take Ferndale on this one. Um, you know, but I expect it'll be a shootout. I mean, it'll be a close game. I mean, I mean, it could be that 63-56 type game. Who knows? But if Donaldson plays, you know, then that gives him Pontiac another another element to um to that team. So we'll see how that one goes. But I expect that game to be a wild and crazy shootout over there in Ferndale um, between two teams that are more than capable of scoring a bunch of points. So we'll see what happens there in that one. Royal Oak and Troy, um, Royal Oak, not impressed with them. Yeah, they got that win against Taylor. Um, Troy, Troy is going to win this one comfortably because of the, um, because of their experience. Nolan Block, um, obviously you look at um, Vandenberg at quarterback, um, or Vandenberg at quarterback. Noel Urry's been playing pretty good football. Um, Jalen Peacock's been playing good. But like I said, until Troy plays somebody legit, I can't trust his team one bit. So I'm, I got Troy in this game over Royal Oak. Troy Athens Oak Park. Um, this one's going to be interesting. Um, Oak Park, we don't know where they're at after their own two start. Um, but they played a more tougher schedule than Troy Athens. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if Oak Park does win this game in Night Valley. It's a 6 o'clock start. But it also wouldn't surprise me at Troy Athens, especially getting it, their act together after um, losing week one to Frazier. So in this one, I'm going to go Troy Athens in this one because of, you know, they, I think they're more than capable of getting their act together. now. But it wouldn't surprise me if Oak Park did win that game. So we'll see how that one goes in that one. North Farmington at Seahome, of course. This is a rematch of a Seahome win over North Farmington. I think this is going to be one of the best games on the board because when you look at this team, both teams run. I mean, North Farmington coming off a tough schedule, only two start falling um, to Caledonia last week. Um, 
Seaholm coming off a tough loss to the Jesuit. Um, and this one here, I really like the um, I like the Maples in this one, being in front of the home fans, being in front of the Forest. Um, I think that could be a really interesting matchup here. It's a trap game. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the Maples have a good chance to win this one over there at Seaholm. Um, against a good Oak Park team, against a good North Farmington team. Um, but North Farmington counters with Ryan Shelby, so we'll see how that one goes. Um, let's go to the white now. Um, of course, the white and the red have league games this week here. Um, but also, the, it's all league games, by the way, this week here. Um, Rochester at Bloomfield Hills. Um, you know, both teams are 0-2. Both teams are struggling defensively. Um, I know Jace Reed's been the real deal at Bloomfield Hills, but I don't trust Bloomfield Hills in this one. I'm going to take Rochester. Um, I think Rochester with Jack Lauer, um, I think he can, if he can get the end zone, I think the Falcons have a good chance to win this game, you know, and hopefully, um, you know, when you look at them, um, hopefully turn the things around, things around this season. Bloopy Hills, I got questions with them coming in, and I still have some questions now when you look at the Blackhawks. Um, you got you got Farmington and Groves. This is the battle of the Falcons, the blue, the blue birds and the green birds. Um, this is gonna be interesting. I don't know where Groves is at after losing to West Bloopy the way they did on their home field. Farmington's a team, yeah, they fought tough against Muskegon Reese Puffer. Um I think at the end of the day here, you got to, if you go experience, you go with Groves. Um, if you want an upset bug, this could be the best bet for an upset. Um, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take Groves in this one over Farmington, but barely. So we'll see what happens here in that game there. Um, I think a game that a lot of people are going to keep an eye on is Salford Arson Tech is Har in Harper Woods. Um, both teams have, both teams are high scoring teams. Um, Harper Woods is a, is a, is they're always a solid defense team defensively, but they were exposed last week by Lake Orion. Southfield had to escape Clarkston, um, and Detroit Cast Tech, and they're at home. Um, if you look at the consensus, they're going to pick Southfield to win this game. That's where I'm going as well. I, I just think the Warriors, um, have a little bit too much offensively. Against Harper Woods, but it wouldn't surprise me if Jacob Owens says, you know what, I might take this game over. <laughs> Harper Woods really misses Dakota Gary, and there's a big reason why they do. Um, so when you look at that game, I, I just think that if Gary doesn't play, I think Harper Woods is in trouble. Um, obviously, because Gary can spread the field, he can spread the field out. Um, you know, gives Buford, gives, gives him Jacob Olden. A chance, you know what I mean, to um, create explosive plays. I and mean, bottom line is Harper Woods needs to create explosive plays um, no matter who the quarterback is over there. But they've got to create create plays. So I got Southie in that game against Harper Woods um, Friday night. And then the red games, obviously, you got West Bloomfield and Stony Creek in the swamp. Uh, West Bloomfield, I think, is going to win this one convincingly. Um, I just think, but it won't, but it might not be as easy as you think. So we'll see how that one goes. So that might not be as easy as you think, considering, you know, Stony Creek can play time possession football. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. So we'll see how that one plays out. Um, then you have Adams and Clarkston. Um, this is a pick em game. Um, I'm going to go Clarkston because of being at home. They're mo I mean, obviously winning last year behind Desmond Stevens' touchdown. I know Adams is motivated after what happened to them last year um, in the regional final. Um, but I just think Adams, they lost a lot of talent. But Ryan Waters has played really well at quarterback. Um, so we'll see what happens there in that matchup there. And then you have Lake Orion Oxford, the double-O trophy game. Oxford, I'm curious to see how... They do in a rivalry game against Lake Ori. Now, the road team has won the last, I think, five meetings in this series. Um, and Oxford's the road team. But Lake Orion's a different animal this year. When you look at the experience they got, the line they got, the playmakers they got, um, I, 
I just think the Dragons are going to are good. And if their defense is playing better, I think this team, I think this could be a blowout at Dragon Stadium. So we'll see what happens. But it could be if Lake Orion's playing on all cylinders. If not, I expect this game to be really tight, really close. And we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at second on Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Like, thank Coach Wendell Jefferson for being on the podcast this week. And take care, y'all. And I will see you all next week. God bless. See you all next week.